are here, the Lord laid in my heart. It's good for us to come and be grateful to God. Being grateful to God. Looking at the scriptures, I also discovered that there are things that um, the Lord puts there for us so that we can learn. One of the things that I've discovered is that if the Lord wants to take you to America, he starts by pushing you to go to the embassy because you have to get a visa. I know one student from Kenyatta University uh, towards the, uh, the early 80s who after a wonderful sermon by a wonderful preacher on faith, he told the other students, I'm going to America by faith when we close the semester. And sure enough, when they closed the school, he packed his bags and went to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. When he landed, he was asked by the security, where are you going? He says, America. Do you have a visa? He says, no, but I'm going to America by faith. Um, he kept on pushing until he was told, then if you're going to America by faith, you don't need to come to the, to the airport. Because the people who come to the airport have faith, but also visas. But you don't have, you have faith, but you don't have visa. So the young man was so disappointed that heaven did not defend him so that he can go to the U.S. So there are things that God will tell us, but they, they will mean we have to do something. For example, he looks at Abraham and he tells Abraham, look as far as you can see. That one, that which you see, I'll give it to you. But it doesn't end there. He says, wherever your foot is going to trod on. It's, in other words, it's not only seeing it, but then I will also to step onto it. There is some responsibility that is yours. There is a responsibility that is mine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If the Lord was to tell me that he wants to bless me on something, whether it is even financial breakthrough, it will not come by how much I pray but it will come by how much I take the principles of God, believe in them, put them into work. Then it works. But I know you and I would like that one. Kakaraka babra. Tomorrow morning you're a millionaire. But the Bible says I will bless the labors of your hands. So there must be something that I'm holding so that God can bless it. And when he says labor, it means work. Tell your neighbor, work. The other things that I've also discovered in the Bible is that some of us pray for things that God answers, but you don't know. You keep on complaining. For example, how many people have ever prayed for patience? Oh, God, give me patience. Oh, I want to be patient in my family. I want to be patient in my life. I want to be patient in my, in my job. I want to be patient as a student. Then God brings tribulation because tribulation, it's the one that works patience. As you wait upon God to deliver you from tribulation. And when tribulation comes to you, you blame God. But you are the one who prayed for patience. And God gave you tribulations and troubles. So that they can teach you the ways of the Lord. I have also discovered, and Jesus was speaking. He says, now the kingdom of God at this time, it is suffering something. It is violent. And the violent will take it by force. So for me to love my wife and to have a good family, the, 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 the violent will take that by force. It's not easy. See, you ni kwa muka tumbu naona tumbu na sema handi, sweetie, hearty, pie, and so on and so forth. But there is some work for you to do because the kingdom of God and all the blessings that the Lord has, for them to work, it is calling me to be vigilant, to be alert, and to fight for that which I value. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So gratitude, benefits of a thankful heart is what I want to bring to you. And my sermon today is one of my shortest. Because shortest in the sense that all what you need is to know the benefits. And then from there you start thanking God. I know some of you have prayed for humility. You need to know how can humility increase in me. I know some of us have prayed for things that we want God to do in terms of contentment. We want contentment to increase in us. I want to help you find out how we can find contentment. Trust in God. How can it increase in me as I trust in him? 
And how can I have peace increase in me? All these are benefits that come to us to help us overcome those issues that I've mentioned before. When you are thankful, when you are thankful, I don't know whether you know that um, everybody likes giving people things that are thankful. But there are some of us that even when you receive it, you don't acknowledge. But when you have a need, you ask for it. But you don't acknowledge. Yata kusema, ide 50, ishafika. Some of us, it's like we assume, irikuwa lazima. But I pray that God can help us so that as we learn to acknowledge, to appreciate, to thank God, then that is going to do something in life. When God blesses all of us, there is a tendency of us becoming a little bit proud. For example, we had uh, Shiloh at one. Do you know Shiloh at one was so successful than we thought? We can forget God. We can think how wise the bishop was and the team was. Eh? Oh, the bishop and the team were great. But you know what? What God did, it's not me. Who came with it? It, as we discuss, somebody says, block. And I heard like the Lord was telling me, Bishop, wake up. Now it's time for block. So we are running with the block, but it is not my idea. The idea came with someone. But we cannot pride ourselves. We can only thank God. And we pray that none of us will get to that level where we think it was the organization or structure that was awesome. Although then, we cannot forget the fact that we had Air hostesses here. Oh my goodness. It looks awesome. I landed and I almost wondered. Awa, tumewatua wapi. Hii ni Kenya Airways imebadilisha nguo. Ama ni Nishilo Airways. The Nishilo Airways. By the way, until I, 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 I believe, this place which is called Shilo, when we welcome people, we should tell them, welcome to a place of breakthrough. Because one year and what God has done, then there must be some breakthroughs that are coming. And if mine has not come yet, I want to be patient in him because it is also coming to pass in the name of the Lord. So you know what? One of the benefits that happens to us is that pride decreases. When you thank God and you thank the people. My mission to Zambia was not successful. It became successful because they had challenges in Tanzania. They had challenges in Zambia. Because they wanted to make sure the bishop is successful. So for me to be successful there, it meant some people traveling from this place, thinking it would be three days, it took them almost five days. The point that I'm bringing is, I cannot pride myself. There is nothing to pride myself. Mine is just to tell those guys that came with me, may the Lord bless you. Let's sacrifice some more for the Lord. Because when you thank God, pride decreases and humility increases. Are you hearing it? So in other words, when you learn to appreciate, when you learn to, add your fact, some of us, all what we need to do is what uh, Ron has tried to do here. Appreciate, appreciating his wife when she can hear is more powerful than waiting until she has rested. And then at that time, we tell her. Because she will not even appreciate it. But when we are alive, hold your wife's hand. Not because there is danger. But hold your wife's hand. And you wives, be holdable. Kwani ni mesema mbaya? Na nyinyi vijana, don't hold those ones that are not your wives. Na wea dada usikubali kushikwa na mtu ambaye anaweza kukuaribia maplani. Roho anaweza kuwa kishuka. 
And then another young man sees you are being held and says, If you come from where I come from, Karatega Akorino, you know, we used to know who is married and who is not. They don't dress the same way. Ladies that are married, I say. So you cannot mistake them. You, you know, Beatrice has already shown you. The ladies. So the point that I'm bringing to us is that God needs to help us so that when God has done it, we appreciate it. Because sometimes we do it when there is danger only. But we can do it when there is no danger. One of the main stumbling blocks to our cultivating a thankful heart is pride. There is a tendency in all of us to take credit for our successes. We take credit for our successes. You know, even coming to Shiloh, I have always told the Lord, I cannot take credit. The people that can take credit are the Karoganos and those people that were there before, Akina Ankimani and others, Akina uh, Frida, uh, Wafula Moses. Those are the people that we can pride ourselves with. Why? Because the stench from the pigs did not step, stop them coming to church. So their prayers have been answered. They prayed. We were kicked out of that place. We went to Zimmerman. And now we have come back. Milimani. Tell your neighbor, Tawe Milimani Utaenda. But you have to know and appreciate it is not you. There are people that have prayed for us. Actual fact, we are what we are because Joe Kyle, though he doesn't know where this church is at the moment, he contributed to what we are. William Twimising, though he does not know where we are, he contributed to this. Bishop Gaku, who has gone to be with the Lord, though he doesn't know this place because he went before we came, God blesses them for the labors they had. And many others that have gone to be with the Lord, but they prayed for Jimmy to be successful. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. But pride has a way of pulling us and making us take the credit. A thankful heart recognizes that all good things come from the hand of the sovereign God. And that without his mercy, nothing good is possible. Nothing good is possible. I like saying about the sovereignty of God because sovereignty of God is awesome. I, I visited a, a U.S. and somebody gave a testimony. And I thought it was a very interesting testimony. This lady went to the embassy the, the, where there was bomb blast, uh, that, where the embassy was on Moy Avenue. But she was holding a baby on behalf of her cousin and brothers that were going to the U.S. She was holding the baby. May God turn a miracle for you as you serve others. This lady was holding the baby. But the cashier on the other side saw her. These others were given visas, but he also saw her and called her. Lady, come, come to the counter. And the lady goes and he, the lady is asked, do you want to go to America? May that happen to you. I know the struggle we go through. But may that question come to you. I don't know how you are going to answer it. Because the way you answer it can mean a visa or no visa. And I will tell you in a little while. So the lady says, yes, I would love to. Then she was asked, do you have a, a, a passport? By some coincidence, she had carried a passport. I don't know for what. So that she was told, go to, uh, to, to the Commercial Bank of Africa. Pay. I don't know, it was 7000 or something. Go pay 7000 and come. And I will wait for you. That was the cashier saying, I will wait for you. Those are the days that you, you would put your passport and it will go inside and come out with a visa. But there are some of us, when we are asked, you answer like Bishop Kimani. There is an answer I gave and I did not get a visa. I'm standing with Alice and we want to visit U.S. for a conference. Then I'm asked, 
And then I say, Ata siyo mimi niritaka. So the person on the other side just cancelled it. So wewe who kutaka? So she just cancelled it. And next, may God help me to be alert and thankful. This lady when we met in the US, so she was so thankful that the Lord allowed her to carry a baby that was not hers faithfully so that these guys that are going to America cannot be attended to. But the Lord saw her and the desire. Today the Lord has blessed her and all our families are there. And I think she's standing 70, 70 years by now. We thank God for the goodness of the Lord. First Corinthians 4 and verse 7, we are reminded for who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? It is important for us to know that wherever we find ourselves, even being alive today, it is because God desires us to, and we need to be thankful to the Lord. So I'm so grateful for Shiloh at one. And I want to give all the glory to God for what he was able to accomplish. I am not my, myself doing it on myself, but it is the Lord who has done it. Somebody called Howard Boot wrote a book, The Art of Being Big Shot. You know Big Shot is a boss. Mudos. This is what he says. It is my pride that makes me independent of God. It is appealing to me to feel that I am the master of my fate, that I run my own life. This calls my own shots and go at it alone. But that feeling is my basic dishonesty. I can't go it alone. I have to get help from other people. And I can't ultimately rely on myself. I'm dependent on God for my next breath. It is dishonest for me to pretend that I'm anything but a man. Weak and limited. When I'm conceited, I'm lying to myself. I'm pre pretending to be God and not man. My pride then becomes idolatrous worship of myself. And that is the national religion of hell. So anytime you just want to be the big shot, you miss it. Or tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is not you who did it. It is the Lord who did it. Ati unajua mimi ni mwerevu sana. Kwanza, nilifanya ma savings. Nikaleta 100,000. Na kwa nini hawa kunitaja? Actually, if you wanted us to taja you, we could. But the point is, even that 100 or 50 or 200 or 300 or 500, actually, all what God did is to align your pocket and plan you well. Him. And give you the resources. So it is Him that needs to receive all the glory and not ourselves. Because Thanksgiving, however, is the perfect cure of pride. A constant acknowledgement of the fact that all we have is a result of God's grace that will lead us to more being humble. And the more the Lord helps us, the more humble we become. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in other words, what do you have that you have worked for? What do you have that you're able to pride yourself with? There is nothing. In actual fact, there is one person who preaches, and I like his... Uh, his, his theology, because his theology is very powerful. He says, who am I? I am just hopeless, useless. In, in the way, where I come from is Toho. You know, I am hopeless and useless. Then, if you like, you would say, Mututua Wado. That dust that comes from when you have, you know, the sawdust. In other words, sawdust, high in a value. That's how he looks at his life. He says, I am absolutely nothing without the Lord. And some of you looking at me is that like you, be, you don't believe it. But let me just remind you. Where we Doro? You. You are just Doro. And one day we'll declare, let Doro go back to Doro. And Vumbi go back to Vumbi. And Ash go back to Ashes. Even with all the handsomeness that some of us have. 
Tell them, tell them, just remind them. Where we Doro? Just please, please, please help them. Help them. Help them. Because that should keep you humble. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, every time you want to be prideful, especially we that uh, God has blessed us, it's always good to remember, Chitala, the Karums we stayed before we got these wives, eh? those ones, eh? the one that was three in one. Oh, bless the Lord. But the toilet and the bathroom was outside, but it was three in one, that one. So that when you see where you are, that you have a place where you have a facility inside. <laughs> At your facility where? So some of us that have lived in Zimmerman, the less by, it is 9 by 8 kitchen. When God gives you a 20 by 15 kitchen, you should always remember a 9 by 10. Why kuingia kupika inataka mpango. So that you don't pride yourself. Then you can see what God has done and you give him all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So if you want to deal with your pride, Go back where you are coming from. You know, one of the places that I like going back is high school days. I don't know what was happening. I, I looked malnourished, holding Machako's technical school board. Yani unatisha upigwe kapicha, unapose. But when I look at that, I wonder, who you ninani? Oh, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't get the joke. On the 3rd of March, 19 long ago, I look at that guy who was getting married to Alice and I wonder, where had he come from? What was the problem? Because I think those guys had problems. Both financial and everything. But there we are. So we go back so that we don't pride ourselves. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, go back. See yourself what God has done for you. So here I'm talking to people that can be proudful, but we refuse to be proud. We know it is by the grace of God. If you want pride to die, keep on talking about the people that have blessed you. One of the ways that I have kept my pride down is remembering that one day I was chased out of school because of 20 shillings. Fees. And a lady, I still remember, two of them paid my school fees. There are nurses training as nurses. They normally would get eight a bob every month. So she gave 20. You, you, you are not getting it. You are giving somebody 25% of your earning, I say. And then they also added something else. The other one who had no 20 gave me an Oris watch. So that because I was in Form 4 to make sure I don't miss class, I say, I remember them. Ata sahi. Na kuna wakati nilipereka alis. Nikisema nilipereka, it will look funny. Kwa sabi ya hadithi nimempatia alis nyingi, ya ndi ya nilipereka. Aliniambia, uwezi kuwa kuniambia hivyo, tuende. And we did that. Why? Because it humbles me today. There must be something that you need to do so that it can humble you. By going back to that high school, I mean that uh, primary school, where you went without shoes, just going back there. You know, some of our children, when you tell them that, they wonder why, how unfaithful and how uh, your parents were so mean because they could not buy. They don't understand that even themselves, the parents, were living by that grace of God. So going without shoes, when we are going to high school is when we took miguyetu to a cobbler. Eh? Because we could not buy butter shoes. So that we tell the cobbler, this is my mugu, please make sure nimepata kiatu. And tunachorewa kiatu, wana yesu asifiwe, unasoma meakaine nayo, unapiga mpira nayo, unaingia kwa matope, na yaribiki. In other words, I'm just saying how God is gracious. That we went to school without shoes. 
But it will remind us, when you look at how many pairs you have, you can make a choice. Then it goes, you, takes you back there. And you can... How you valued the Sunday best? Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? How you valued the Sunday best? The Sunday best. And you are not embarrassed wearing it every Sunday. But it was your Sunday best. Now how many clothes that you go in the morning and you are wondering, do I wear this one? Suppose somebody else wears the same. Those are our sisters. We will look like uniform. By the way, none of you are, is wearing uniform with another. That's why it's good to be here. You can see all the sisters. You look different. Akuna mtu ameva sim. May the Lord bless you. So it helps us continually to be thankful to the Lord. So when I see the cathedral over there, with the wonderful seats over there, I remember the pigs. The ground was gray or brown if you like, and the, si the side were gray. It was a suit. Top gray, side gray, brown shoes. That is, so I go back there, and I see the goodness of the Lord. And you know what I hear the last time I checked? God has not finished with me, because the last time I checked, I found out that I'm more valuable myself, more than mini sparrows. In other words, he's so concerned about me, than the mini sparrows that are there. May the good Lord help us to humble ourselves. Shiloh at one, let's humble ourselves because God is going to amaze us and surprise us. If we are thankful, what it does, complaining decreases. Complaining decreases. I don't want to be naive. I know for sure there could be one or two or some of you that met people as we are pushing people to, 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 to Shiloh at one that made a comment to you and you even wondered, hey, query, they are right. Because why is Bishop asking us for a block and a pledge? There are some of you even who said, I will be giving, what, if they ask a block, I will take it from my pledge and give it to them. May the good Lord bless you. But if you want not to complain, or your complain to decrease, learn to be Triple H. Even now, she is still collecting blocks. Even now. She is so excited about it. And she doesn't care whether you put 50 or 20. She, the, the last time I checked, she was saying, it's only 1,500 1, remaining for another block. And then lastly, she says it is done. Now, the point I'm bringing is, this person gets excited. Why? It's an opportunity to give. Why people don't insure, even for their own health? It's because they think they will always be strong. But the point is, I would pray not to get sick but I will ensure myself. Why? Because the other guy who will get sick will be helped by the money that I've also put there. This issue of benevolent, we don't put it so that we die. Actually, I pay it so that I don't die. But whoever dies can be helped by it. Now, the problem of some of us is that, oh, wh why? We have never lost anybody. We are only helping that family or that. Praise God. Give for sick with Tagonga Kwenu. It is not only that one. They will be more expensive. But let's learn to appreciate what God is doing. And so that complaint can be shorter by praising God. Somebody was stolen his briefcase in London. And um, it was just pulled from his legs. And then the briefcase was taken. So when he woke up from slumber, the briefcase was not there. So he reported that briefcase has gone. And it went. He never saw it. But then he sat back and asked himself, what can I praise God here now that my briefcase is stolen? He found out that first of all, he can thank God that he is not a thief. It is not him who stole. It was stolen from him. So he thanks God. 
And I pray that God can help us. That in every situation, we can look for ways to thank God so that complaining can go down and can decrease and keep on decreasing. COVID came. Do you know we thank God for COVID? I'm not saying it should come back again. But COVID helped the Kenyan preachers, especially those that were shy on the cameras. Right now, I'm in the camera. I'm speaking to people who are in the U.S. and other places because of COVID. Do I want it to come again? No. But I can thank God in that situation. Did some of us get sick? Yes. Were we hit hard? Yes. But can I thank God? Yes, I will. I'm thanking God that we are able to become better church. We can preach to us even at home. There was one time the church had only 15 people, uh, the ones I would preach to, but I knew you at home were watching. Why? Because COVID had come. Let's look for ways we can thank God. Because when we do, complaining decreases. But if you want to complain, actually, even here today, if you want to complain, there are a thousand and one reasons for you to complain. Number one, Maybe you have sat in a seat that you normally don't sit. Two, the guy sitting with you next, he's one of those people that keep on shaking you. So you, you almost want to move. And number three, you are not seeing me properly because there is a camera in front of you. But you can thank God. Say there is a screen somewhere. I can look at the screen, forget about the bishop, and praise God. Let's look for ways to praise God because then we will complain less. Eh? We'll complain less. I went to Migori last Sunday. They had a fans drive. And you know, I was coming from a fans drive here. Then I go to another one there. You know, the tendency would have been, now that we are coming from a fans drive, you should understand. No, 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 no. You don't even tell him. You tell God, God, thank you, there is another opportunity. He, Unajua, they are not asking you how much. It, how much? Actually, even here, we never ask you how much you're going to give. It was free will. We gave according to the ability that God had given us. So we go to that, and we were so glad with Alice that we were able to be a blessing in Migori, and they raised 1.6. My goodness, I thought. And it is a small congregation. Actually, you are bigger than the congregation. The first service here is bigger than their congregation. But God See what God can do. But I know some of you, when an opportunity comes, the story goes like this. Hata mimi, in actual fact, pare ni napitia, ni pangumu sana. You are trying to say, I cannot give. Because you are giving a story of where you are. Anytime you feel like your spirit wants to say so, close your mouth. This person, even if you gave him 1,000 or 500, he was not asking you how much. He was just saying he has a need. When I learned that secret, I got delivered. If you come to me and you want 100,000 shillings, I don't tell you that I don't have. I will give you what I can give you. Whether it is 1,000 and may God bless you. Now, I know some of you would go back and say, Iyo moja iwezi tosha, si unirudishie. Then you are refusing, you cannot give it back. Because you see, we, we have many things that are happening. We learn to praise God and to appreciate him for his goodness. Complaining decreases and contentment increases. If we are continually thankful and thanking God for what he has done and is doing in our lives, we will not fall victim to the sin of complaining because complaining is not stating the truth about a particular situation that is genuinely wrong. Rather, complaining or grumbling is an attitude that questions God's sovereignty over the affairs of our life. It is an attitude that expresses itself in the following manner. If God loves me, how can he let this happen to me? Even if we don't verbally express our complaining because of being introverts, we are still complaining wherever we are. May the good Lord help us to start not complaining. But we thank God, complaining decreases in the name of the Lord. Thirdly, doubt in God 
decreases. And trust in God increases. Do you know when you start being thankful to God, all of a sudden you, your faith builds up. All of a sudden it's like you, you have been lifted from where you are to something else. Because what will put you down is doubt. Can God do it? I will still say it and say it again and say it here. It is 120 billion that we are looking for. Oh, we are looking now for 120 and we have cleared almost 60. God is going to come through for us. But uh, is he asking us to raise 1.2 today? No, 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 no. Is it from you? No, 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 no. But he wants you to be a part of what God is going to do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as we thank him for what happened on the, on the 30th, God is going to release more blessings to us even as we move into the next level. Significant obstacle to trusting God at all times is lack of thankful spirit. However, thanksgiving provides the perfect cure for this problem. Paul could trust God in all his trials because he always recorded God's past deliverances and thus could confidently trust in God for the future as well. Notice these words in 2 Corinthians. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all comfort, who has delivered from such deadly prayer, and he will deliver us again. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 10. When we know that God will still deliver us. I know a lot of time we forget the first deliverance, but if God delivered you at first, he will still deliver you deliver you again. If the Lord help us build the cathedral there, we are building another one here. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this one, the latter glory must be better than that one. Yes. But when we go back there, we'll also beautify theirs. Kwanza facility, you understand, eh? Because this facility at United Unasimama, unafanya mkono hivi. COVID is here to say idea. So trust in God. Because as we talk about his goodness, as we encourage one another, as we talk about what God has done, as we say he did it the last time we were here, he's going to do it again, we are putting our faith in that God. Mungu atafanya tena. Even you, what God did for you five years ago, he can do it again. God can do it again. God can do it and he will do it even much better, bigger. We were told by Ron here that um, the season we are in will be prophetic. Oh, I know you never got it. You are planting, but the reaper is overtaking you. Hiyo inamaanisha nini? Umepanda ikakuwa mvunaji akakuja. Yaani mnapanda mkivuna, mkipanda mkivuna, mkipanda mk. May God help us to get to that level. It is a new season. But we have to thank God for the past even as we move into the next that God has for us. A thankful spirit that continually reflects on God's past mercies is strengthened to rely on God for all future needs and thus is protected from falling victim to the sin of doubt, sin of despair, and sin of taking shortcuts like Abraham of old. God has said it, I believe it, and God is going to do it for me. Finally, worry decreases and peace increases. Why worry? Why worry? One of the drawbacks of Christian living is the tendency to have a healthy focus of the negative and not take enough time to thank God for his blessing. You see, anxiety, anxiety to liubiriwa, ni kitumbaya. Because anxiety, like the preacher spoke, I thought he would dwell on it longer, but he didn't because he, his, his, his point was the four languages. I hope you still remember the four languages. But the point is, the anxiety of Isaac could not wait on God but could only look at what his father had done, which is what he was going to do. Repeat the same sins that his father did. But God delivered him from going back to Egypt. And I pray that God will deliver us 
from anxiety because anxiety will take us back even to our traditional norms. But we want to believe God and pursue him and thank him and hear him. So Isaac is told by God, don't go. And he obeyed. I pray that God will speak to someone even today. Don't do it and we obey him. Don't go back on the negative and we do it. We become positive to the Lord. Why worry? Such an attitude is the perfect recipe for worry to rule in our hearts. However, God's word has a cure for worry, worry, worry. Have a thankful heart. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I, I love that. What this verse is trying to say, don't you worry. Don't you be anxious. You are given to God, then rest. Just give it to God. How well can you give it? You can give it in prayer. You can also give it in petition. But after you do it, rest. Why worry and you cannot add anything to yourself? Present your request to God. By how? You, you, in everything, by prayer. Give your petition. Give thanksgiving. Give it to God. Let him handle it. If we never got that a million uh, on, on that yet, I would still sleep. I would still sleep. Amen. And I will come to church and tell you, we never got that. Because it is not my business. My business, I gave it to him. He could be waiting to surprise us. You know, I, I know I haven't come here for a while. Uh, but it is good to let you know. A couple of weeks ago, I was with my friend. And Cornerstone, we were looking for 12 million. And we applied in a circle, but they started bringing some problems. So I'm sharing with my friend. The way, by the way, the guy next to you, who's a chess and I, and I said, I'm going to go to the house. By the way, I'm looking for a thousand. And uh, <clears throat> I thank God. So anyway, as we sat and we were having a cup of tea, I told him where I am. Do you know what he told me? I will give you the 12 million with the 15% interest. Is that okay? Yani anataka mimi ni negotiate. That one is the best. Bank it, I teach 17. Do you know what? He just wrote a promissory note which I signed. It was uh, stamped by our Kili. I sent it to the U.S., and the following day, money was in the account. What the school wanted to buy is two buses. Wanunuwe bus mbiri. Kwa hivyo kuna bus mbiri zitakuja. Ukiziona ni zetu. Sasa wacha siyasa. Siyasa ndiyo hii. Bisho bali tuambia tununue. Tutoe pesa za kujenga shilo. Sasa amenunua mabasi. Sija nunua. Ni mkono wabwana. Na unajua <laughs> mkono wabwana ukitembea. Hata we mwenye unakustua. Uyu rafiki yangu, kuna siku nilikuwa nimefikira na heza nikopesha. Akakata. Nari rafiki yangu, anakata. Lakini sasa mimi siku muambia. I never told him. He's the one who said, I think Bishop I have that kind of money. Is it only 12 or you want 13 or 14? It is not that that you want. Um, I want to pray that God will give you those destiny helpers that know you so that they can provide for And they are there. Watch kuwa mtu wa kiroho sana. Don't become so spiritual. When you, it is hurting, it is hurting. So when I told the school board, they were so excited. The LCC, they were so excited. The teachers were so excited because now they are checking on their buses which will be coming in the next couple of weeks before they open again. Now that is the God that we trust in. Now the question is, how are you going to pay? That is not my business. Neither is it your business. Because the Bible is telling me to make my request known to God. Then I leave it to him. He knows how. When we were here last, we walked with someone. And we, you know, and we walked and I showed him a, a basket coat there. And I showed him. 
Then I remembered the Lord had told me he can do it. Yeah, yeah. Nirafiki yangu. So when we were there, I said, you know what? God told me it is me who is becoming shy and I refuse to be shy anymore. Niriambio na mungu hii unaweza ya. Hii unaweza nisaidia. Akanambia si imeisha, eh, lakini sijalipa. Hii unaweza nisaidia. He said, he sent me the bill. What I'm saying to you, hatuongeagi, hebu mtumpatie mungu atatu surprise. Me, Shilo, is a place of breakthrough. For me, for my family, and for my ministry. I will never, ever be the same again because I landed in Shiloh. And I believe a lot of us are getting those breakthroughs in the name of the Lord. Doubt in God decreases, decreases. And trust in God increases. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we are saying worry decreases and peace increases. And to experience these benefits, all of them, there are two things that I pray that you can cultivate in your life. And one of it, the cross before you, the world behind you. It always, msalaba mbele, dunia nyuma. My thoughts that are negative behind me, the cross before me, which is the victory that the Lord has brought to me. That should always, and that's why I told you about the song, the cross. That's where I was getting it, the cross. Because if my focus is the cross, I will not pride myself. I'm where I am, saved by grace because of the cross. Number two, I will incorporate thanksgiving as part of my daily prayers. That every time I start praying, I thank God. I thank God three quarters of my time. I thank God 90% of my time of prayer. Then only 2% becomes request because the other eight I do petition for my family, for my nation and then I tell the Lord and this are the needs that I have for me, for my family and for ministry and those should take a few Iyo, you know when you have prepared the ground when you have prepared the ground, then you finish like talking to your friend there is that song that used to be sung by an American long time ago and um, he was singing how his mother used to talk to God like a friend. No, his father used to talk to God as his friend. That he would talk about, oh, thank God for the weather. The weather has been good. And we, we had this harvest and we had that. We, he would thank God. And then finally he would say, by the way, Lord, and don't think I'm complaining. I, I want my son to, to know you. And I want uh, uh, our family to grow in Jesus' name. And God would answer. The son is the one reporting that his father would get to a place and he would talk to God as his friend. My prayer is that God will become our friend because we will see the cross before us and then we'll be thankful heart and we'll finish by some request. The danger is, you tell people to worship, even here now. When we lift up our hands, we worship God a few seconds. Then the devil has problems. We rebuke him. We curse him. We chase him. And then, give me this. Give me that. I need this. And then we finish with a powerful prayer of cursing anybody, the government, the place you are born, the village, the school you went to, you cast them all and then you say amen. What answer is God going to answer? Let's make our request known to God. Let's learn to worship him. And when it is worship, let's just worship him. When it is our request, let's make our request known to him. Where is this? And we should not worry. Look at your neighbor. Neighbor, don't worry. No, please tell them seriously. Don't worry. You, you, you know, I hear in my spirit there are someone, some people here that are so worried about tomorrow. Uh, so worried. Please tell them again, don't worry. The Lord is in control. Or maybe you can ask them, by the way, what are you worrying about? Are, do, are you seated next to someone who can tell you? Why are you worried about? What is that thing that worries you? Or you are sitting next to a person who cannot tell you? I also think you cannot tell them. 
Because it takes two to tango. You, you need to be... To, next time, sit to, next to a person you can tell uh, that I need God to untangle me from whatever situation I find myself. The cross before me, the world behind me. 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 No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Maybe you are here and you are saying, Bishop, I want pride in my life to decrease so that humility can increase. This altar is open for you. Maybe you are saying, Bishop, I want complaining to decrease so that contentment can increase. This altar is open for you. Maybe you are saying, Bishop, Doubt in God should decrease in my life so that trust in God can increase. Or maybe you are saying, Bishop, worries should decrease. I worry it should be decreased so that the peace of God can increase. This altar is open and the ministry team are around here. They will just come and please just come and shortly. It is here in the people. When do you have an issue? You want God to give you peace. You want God to increase contentment. You want God to increase your trust in God. You want God to, to give you, uh, to decrease worries, to decrease doubt in God, to decrease complaining, and to decrease pli pride. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided.
Maybe you are here and you would like to give your life to Jesus. Only believe all things are possible. If you are there and you want to give your life to Jesus, just walk to the front. Just come. Someone will pray with you right now and your name will be written in the book of life. You are there. You want to give your life to Jesus. That is the best part of this service where your life gets changed forever and your name is written in the book of life. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from this altar today, we declare that we'll be grateful. We'll be thankful. We'll give you praise. We'll honor you over the things that you do for us. And we'll appreciate those that, dear Father, you have brought our way and have become a blessing to us. We'll also, Heavenly Father, not worry because, dear Lord, our peace is found in you. We pray that we'll have contentment and it will continue increasing. Humility will continue increasing so that pride can decrease in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you honor and we give you praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.